whatever thought you articulate in your mind over and over and over will manifest as physical wiring in your brain. So if you're saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, oh, this is really hard, this is really hard, this is really hard, you will wire your brain to think those thoughts more easily. And so if you get people that are farther ahead on their journey and you get them to play that game, why am I about to fail and what would I have to do to guarantee my success? And they may give you absurd answers, but the absurd answers will help you identify what the critical pieces in the puzzle are. In that moment, I was really thinking about that's super fucking dangerous. Don't be too impressed with yourself. Remember, if you think you're already a badass, you're not gonna get any better. Welcome to the Body, Mind, and Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Seam Lund, and behind me, there's Los Angeles. You might have heard of Tom Bilyeu, the co-founder of Quest Nutrition, and uh, you might have heard of Impact Theory as well. So Impact Theory is his new company, and they had this competition amongst their followers, and uh, I basically won. I basically won the competition, and they flew me out into LA. It was um, quite a fun experience for me to, you know, hop on someone else's live stream and answer some questions, so it was fun. So definitely check it out. Body, Mind, Empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind. What we're going to do today is simply going to go through some of the questions that I have for Tom and uh, some other people who have reached out to me as well. Nice. From, from the community. So. Well, that's cool. Let's I didn't know. All right, let's kick that. it off. Yeah. What's that first question? Hit us up. Well, the first one is like. What's, what personality trait or quality are you most proud of as an individual? Wow. Uh, grit, perseverance, 100%. Like, just being willing to grow and improve at all times requires that you have the ability to see it through. And it's the one thing that, like, as a kid, I didn't have. So I've always been um, ambitious. I've always had big dreams. Um, but I didn't always have the fortitude to see it through. And the fact that you can learn that, that you can teach yourself that, develop that, like I had to put a lot of work into that. Mm. Um, and because I had to work so hard for it, that's part of the reason that I'm proud of it. Right. Yeah, that's a cool question. I haven't really thought of that before. Like what, yeah, how did you go about actually developing it? Well, the, the honest answer is a deep and abiding amount of shame. Mm. And this is something that I think people don't use enough. Um, I was really ashamed of myself mm. and I was in love with this chick who's now my wife <laughs> and it was it was for the first time really a mirror into who I was and I thought wow like I've told this woman I'm going to take care of her I've told her and her father that I'm super ambitious and one day I'm going to make her rich and the reality was as I'm giving my father-in-law that speech I know that that morning I laid in bed for like four hours wow. And so I'm like, oh God, like there's such a disconnect between what I want, what I'm saying, and then what I'm actually doing. Mm. And having Lisa like now be tied to me and what I'm able to accomplish and that our life is gonna be the summation of what we can do together, if she's pulling her weight and I'm not pulling mine, like that just felt super shitty. Wow. So, and look, I'd been developing like pieces of a growth mindset by then and so um that was the first step so having enough shame to like propel me to really change and do something different and then i was reading all the time and beginning to get the bits of a growth mindset that said you can learn anything okay mm -hmm. well if i can work out in the gym and i can develop bigger muscles and i can get stronger mm -hmm. can i push myself can i force myself to stick with things that are hard or boring long enough to actually get good at them. And you and I were talking earlier, so right on the other side here is uh, a painting of Michael Jordan. I don't follow sports, but it's from the infamous flu game where Jordan played a championship game, I think it was like game six, with what was almost certainly food poisoning at 103 degree temperature, and he just showed up and played. And that is so inspiring to me that surrounding myself with images like that, with stories like that, telling people that I'm like that, and then um, just when you, in fact, you said this earlier, like the joy is to find yourself at the edge of what you're capable of, 
and then push it a little yeah. bit more so that you can bump out yeah. that the sort of outer regions of what you're actually able to do. And in living there and constantly pushing that boundary, you actually do get better at it. So, you know, my first bit of grit was getting out of bed like in an hour. I'm only going to lay for one hour, you know, yeah. and then it's you get to the point where like now, like this morning, I woke up at 2.45 a.m. and I still got out of bed in 10 minutes. So getting to the point where you just keep pushing that boundary back, right, back, back right. until it's it becomes a habit, you know. It becomes a part of you do like oh, it becomes a part of your identity. Like the more things you do, the more frequently, the more you start to associate those things with who you are. So it's very, it's literally like anything can be done. It's a habit, or it can be developed. One hundred percent. So what habit or practice do you wish you'd adopted earlier? Well, I wish, I wish I'd had a growth mindset. So just uh, to make it a habit, I wish I'd been saying positive things mm. to myself in my head. And the other day I was thinking about, okay, what does it look like to, like, so I'm writing a book now, which we were talking about earlier. It's, it is the bane of my existence because it takes so much time and energy. Yeah. And I thought, is it really going to do what I want it to do? And I think it's going to be amazing. And the woman that's helping me with it, by the way, if she's watching right now, you are incredible. This has nothing to do with you. You are the only reason that this book is actually continuing to progress. But I I really started thinking, okay, the book is going to work amazingly for people like you, for anybody that already knows that they want to grow and improve, right? Amazing. Mm -hmm. But for somebody that like is really at the beginning, like where I was in my early 20s. I don't know, man. It feels like maybe it's it's too big. It's not like the really basic shit. And so what would like a pamphlet, and I started thinking of the pamphlets they give you on an airplane that tell you how to remove the emergency door. I thought, what's like the mindset version of that? And there's really two things. It's fucking dead simple, and I think people really don't do it. I certainly didn't. And so it's the one thing I wish I'd done sooner, which is whatever thought you articulate in your mind over and over and over Mm -hmm. will manifest as physical wiring in your brain. So if you're saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, oh, this is really hard, this is really hard, this is really hard, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, right? And you just get in that fucking loop of it's hard and I'm not good enough, then you will wire your brain to think those thoughts more easily. And so they just become that default wiring. Mm -hmm. And it's a process called myelination. This isn't woo-woo shit, like literally, those connection points in your brain get wrapped with what's called myelin. It's a fatty tissue and it allows the electrical impulses to travel faster. Right. So it becomes more effortless to think that. Now, if I'd known that, I wouldn't have thought all the negative shit about myself that I thought. It doesn't mean that I don't still have those thoughts now. I just don't let them be chronic. Right. I don't let myself loop around it. Mm. So that's one. The second thing is then what you say out loud will then further shape what people hold you accountable to. So I was thinking negative shit and I was saying negative shit because part I wanted to be a stand-up comic in my early 20s. And my whole brand of humor was making fun of myself. Mm-hmm. So now people look to me to entertain them by making fun of myself. Right. So I'm thinking all this negative shit, then I'm saying it out loud in the form of self-deprecating humor, and I'm literally just like hardwiring this paralysis of inability. Mm-hmm. And so not realizing, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> and But not understanding like how it put me in this weird loop. Mm. Yeah, but you mentioned like the importance of you know being a learner and having a growth mindset. But do you think is could there be some sort of point where it, it can backfire at you? Like having if you could maintain a beginner's mind for too long or acknowledging that you don't know nothing, can it have a backfiring effect? You're this is advanced class shit now. <laughs> so I I don't think anyone ever got successful without being able to hold two competing ideas in their head at the same time. Mm. So. I balance between I'm fucking extraordinary and like, hey, dumbass, you know nothing and be really careful about thinking you know something because the the great stoic quote, you can't learn what you think you already know. Mm. And so I, I just had this moment the other day and I was so fucking stoked and I was so like arrogant in this moment knowing that it is what's going to make me successful, which is I don't, I don't remember where I was or what I'd done, but I just like there was someone I needed to impress. Mm. And I impressed the shit out of them. And they were like, holy fuck. Like, I've never seen somebody like you. This is incredible. And they're really important to what we're doing moving forward. And so I was like, holy shit. Like, I just pulled that off. I needed to be impressive. I was impressive. And then in, in like that same thought, and that wasn't what made me feel arrogant, by the way. What made me feel arrogant was the next thing, which was in that moment, I was really thinking about that's super fucking dangerous. Don't be too impressed with yourself. Remember 
if you think you're already a badass, you're not going to get any better. Mm. And so I, the confidence that I had to go in that room, to perform, to know I could do it, came from really believing in myself and knowing that I'm good. Mm. And then the other part that really, really fed into my arrogance, ironically, is recognizing that I'm, I'm infantile compared to where I could get if right. I'm willing to put in the work. And so being able to flip-flop, knowing when I need the boost of confidence yeah. based on something real that I really can show up and perform, but also that they say genius is a young man's game only because people stop thinking fresh thoughts because they think they know something right. and that it, that ultimately is a trap. Yeah, like the moment you, the moment you think you've reached somewhere or you learned or you mastered a skill, that's the moment where you're immediately being humbled right away, you know? For sure. That's really crazy. All right, let's see what we got in the feed here. What's up, Uri, buddy? We're going to, we've got uh, Elizabeth Lo Lalanis. <laughs> I'm not sure how to say that name. Uh, we've got Ty That King, Russ Turner. What is up, everybody? Uh, Elizabeth says, always learning from everyone else. Absolutely. That, that, uh, that's a good point. Like, you can learn from anything or from anyone. Or, like, it doesn't matter who the person is. You can learn some sort of a mindset skill or lesson from them, whatever they might have. So, I think it's even right. worst case, yeah. if somebody just teaches you what not to do, yeah, exactly. that can be really powerful. But again, you have to be open to really looking at them as a teacher. What can I learn from this person? What can I learn from this scenario? Um, and not coming into it with arrogance. Yeah, exactly. Even like the atrocities of history, for example, those are like very, very good life lessons in a mm -hmm. sense of what not to do or, or how you can avoid that in the future. No question. Yeah. For sure. All right, Connor says, hey Tom, my man, uh, DM'd you a few weeks ago and you asked me to email you. Uh, that doesn't sound like me. I would have asked you to email somebody else almost certainly. Uh, I did, just haven't heard back. Totally understand it though, busy business killer. If you have time, it would be unreal to connect. Um, do you have, if you have a question, hit me up right here and I can get you that answer. Um, I do try to DM people back if it's a big question, I always tell people to hit me up during a live. Usually I'm, I'm talking about my Facebook lives, which we film at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Fridays. Um, that way I can give you a meaningful answer and I'm not just trying to give you something fast that I can type. Um, so that's always cool. So Connor, hit me up if you've got that question right here. Uh, Steven says, my favorite podcast out there. I really hope you're talking about impact theory. Uh, best book on thinking positive. Don't know what we're talking about. What's up? Tom, that's from Carnitas. What's up? What's up, Showable? Serene Fateh from Saudi. I'm guessing Saudi Arabia. What is up, man? I love the global audience. Want to be a guest on your show? Hey, we're always looking for amazing people. So um, if you think you've got a story, write us at connectedimpacttheory.com. We will take a look. And uh, if it's one day in the future, all for it. Keep in contact. Let us know what you're up to. We love hearing about it. Cool, so Russ Turner in the feed, what's, oh, that's not what we wanted to do. All right, it's pouring in, it's pouring in. Hit those likes, man. <laughs> Keep sharing. NWN, I don't know what that means. Follow, oh, it's your name. What's, note what's new, note what's new. What's up, welcome to the feed. Jody Lakushi, shoe. Absorb what's useful, reject what's not, and add what's uniquely your own, Bruce Lee. I love that quote. Um, John E or Johnny's John three S. How did you pick your partners in quest? So that is a long story. So they heard me talking about how to use media and psychology to influence people's behavior. They had a new company that they were starting. That was, um, a technology company called awareness tech. They needed a copywriter. They brought me on as a copywriter. They said, don't think of yourself as a copywriter. You can have any job you want in the company. You just have to become the right person for the job. And over a span of about eight and a half years, I worked my ass off, went from copywriter to chief marketing officer and owning 10% of the company. Uh, then I quit because I was totally fucking miserable. And they said, look, come back. Let's do this together. And I said, cool. But if we're going to work together, then um, it needs to be something that we're deeply passionate about. It's got to be something that we can all really believe in. We can be ourselves. And they totally agreed. We decided to sell the technology company. And then we started Quest as equal partners and the rest is history. So um, they really chose me as a copywriter back in the day, and then I just made the most of that opportunity. That's the truth. Um, what is my favorite book? This is from Lacey Aloha, um, or maybe Lacey, that would make more sense. Uh, my favorite book, oof, that's tough. 
Um, I think the book that right now I'm the most hyped on is Principles by Ray Dalio. So I would get way on that book. From a business perspective, no book has ever changed my life more. Um, from a non-business perspective, just sort of foundational in my life, the book that had the biggest impact on me was um, The Power of Myth by Joseph Campbell. That really got into the operating system of my soul and is largely responsible for us founding Impact Theory. So wow. check that one out if you don't already know it. Mm -hmm. All right, what other questions do you have for us? Uh, I'm gonna make, ask one, one more question. Like, uh, do you think it's better to let you know some of your flaws as a, as a person to slip in if they would compensate for some of the other strengths that you have? Like, uh, would you, if you, if you had like the, if you knew you could improve upon something and uh, you would even have the resources or time to do it, uh, would you put in more, the, more would, you put, would you put in more effort to improving yourself or fixing that loophole uh, or to... Or like, to, would I rather lean on my strengths or fix my weaknesses? Yeah. Um, to me, it comes down entirely to what do your goals demand? So everybody wants to make this binary thing between, oh, I've got weaknesses, do I shore them up or do I just rely on my strengths? And to me, it's what do your goals demand? What do you enjoy doing? Um, and get good at that thing. So if you've got early wins, meaning you've got like a natural um, talent for something, awesome. And if you enjoy it, lean on it. If your goals demand it, go for it. Like um, I've, I got early wins in speaking. Mm. So I've just always had an easier time than other people putting a sentence together. But I still put, I mean, at this point, Jesus, it's got to be close to 30,000 hours of just mm. raw practice. From the time that I was about 13, um, I was per performing impromptu comedy routines at my lunch table in high school. I did that every day, right. Monday through Friday for four days or four days, for four years. And so just the number of hours practicing comedy routines in front of the mirror, doing every speech and debate thing. I was on speech and debate in high school. So it's like I took something that... I enjoyed, I took something that I had um, early wins in, and then I worked my ass off to get really good at it. Then, for like 15 years, I didn't do anything, I didn't focus on it, nothing. I was building businesses, and I spent an untold number of hours like in spreadsheets, and trying to figure out algorithms, and what's SEO, and all that. And I didn't worry about the fact that I could speak or anything. I was so out of my element and learning everything, but that's what I needed to do in order to ultimately control the resources, to build a company, to have equity. And so for 15 years, I didn't focus on things that I was naturally good at. I have no natural instincts whatsoever as an entrepreneur. I am not a born entrepreneur in any way, shape or form. And so, but that's been incredibly powerful for me. And some of the most empowering things that I've ever done were things that I have no natural talent for. So. Yeah, for me, it's what do your goals demand? Go do that. Right, but what what would you say like uh, in the future? What kind of habits or routines do you need to develop to reach your goals in the future, which you don't actually at the moment have? Um, well, that's all going to be uh, routines and habits. My routines and habits are pretty optimized, so anything that I will change in the future, I don't see coming yet. Right. So I'm always open, and I would love to discover that my routine is actually way suboptimal, <laughs> and that you know if I make this change or that change, that my life could be entirely different. That'd be amazing. In fact, just recently, and I, I I'm sidestepping the question only because I don't know what I would change right now, um, but. I thought, like, I've experimented with my diet so much over the last decade that I thought I had this fucking down to a science mm. and that I would never change anything about the way that right. I'm doing. I know how to lose fat. I know how to gain muscle. Like, I've got it. Mm. And then, I don't even remember why, I decided that I wanted to try fasting at night, starting my fast at night instead of in the morning. So normally, I'll eat my last meal sometimes 30 minutes before I go to bed. And then, I in the morning, I'll prolong not eating my first meal. So mm -hmm. I'd have my first meal sometimes at noon or one o'clock to get my full 16 hour fast. And I don't know why. I, I think it was partly because of what Lisa's going through with the microbiome and seeing how disruptive it is for her to eat close to bedtime. And she, we've been working with somebody over at a company called Viome, which anybody that's having microbiome issues, look up Viome, V-I-O-M-E. Um, and they've, it, it is miraculous what they've done right. for Lisa. Um, and so they told her, don't eat three hours before you go to bed. And I thought, fuck, like if it makes that big of a difference, let me try it. And so then from three hours, I started doing like four hours. So now I don't, my last meal, I eat four hours before I go to bed mm -hmm. and it's way better wow. for me to manage my hunger. So, um, didn't see that coming. Never thought I would do that. 
So, Matt, I hope that somebody presents me another um, life hack or whatever right. that I can use, but I don't see it coming right now. Exactly. It's like you have to always constantly experiment new mm -hmm. things, you know. But uh, what would be like some things that every person or every human being who wants to improve themselves, what would, what would they need to do every day to, you know, what's, what's like this non-negotiable thing every person should do? Go to bed early and on time every night. So a morning routine for me starts the night before, and this is something that I think people way underestimate. So I go to bed at 9 p.m. Everybody should. At, there's certain hours of sleep that are more productive than others, and I forget the exact hours. It's like 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. or something like that. Right. Those are like the magic hours. Um, it has to do with like the light outside. It has to do with melatonin secretion. I mean, it, there's a whole bunch of things that go into it. Um, so supposedly those are the magic hours. So making sure that you're sleeping during those hours, I think, is pretty critical. Um, and then don't use an alarm. So wake up when you wake up. Mm. Sleep naturally. Um, and if that means you have to go to bed at 8 p.m., go to bed at 8. If that means you have to go to bed at 7, go to bed at 7. Do whatever you need to do to get the amount of sleep that you need. Mm -hmm. um, and then work out. I would work out right away in the morning. So, again, there's research that shows that working out in the morning, even if briefly, and then you do a fuller workout later, is better for getting your, I think it's the, um, the cortisol levels in line with your sleeping cycle. Mm. It's better to spike your cortisol early in the morning. So um, that's pretty interesting. I do it just because I hate working out. And if I don't do it first thing, then I'm not going to do it. Right. Um, so that's big. And then um, meditate. Meditation is huge. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> Calming your mind down, learning to get control of your nervous system, controlling, going back and forth between the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. I think that's really, really important. Um, and then thinkitating. I think is huge. So people let their schedules get so busy. Um, and in that, they're not finding those creative thoughts right, that they would right. have if they um, were taking the time to really relax, reflect. let the mind slow down, reflect, right? Get, get in contact with their subconscious, which I think is really important. And um, then eat right. Fucking right. eat right. People don't eat right. And it, mm. it really has a negative impact on the brain. Yeah, I think like one of the most important things or the most biggest benefit of meditation is that it allows you to become more proactive instead of reactive. Mm. You know, like most people, they tend to only react to things that are happening to them. And uh, meditation allows you to disassociate yourself from the things that are happening to you. you Viktor Frankl has this amazing quote, like, between stimulus and, resp and response is an empty space. And in that empty space, you can choose your response. So meditation actually expands that empty space. Mm. You, 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 you notice yourself in the moment and then you're going to be able to do the right thing of what you, what you want to actually accomplish instead of simply reacting to your emotions or your habits in a sense. Uh, I think that's so important. And his, if, for those of you that don't know, um, Viktor Frankl was a concentration camp survivor in Auschwitz, was also a neuroscientist and wrote um, extensively on what he called logotherapy um, which is basically exactly that moment that he's talking about between the stimulus and the response. It, Man's Search for Meaning is one of the most incredible books. It, um, going back to your question about, or whoever's question it was about books, that one is like required reading for all humans. Yeah, it, it, it's just so uh, important. Connor, that was a person that I asked, asked a question. Um, I might have missed the, the question though, but he says, that's right, man. You gave me the impact theory email to connect through, but would love to interview you um, as you would bring immense value to listeners. Thank you, man. That's really, really kind. I've had to be super selective. So 2017 was my year of yes. Uh, I said yes to basically everything humanly possible that I could. Sadly, 2018 is my year of no, uh, because it, it's the number of things that are competing for my time now are, are insane. And I'm, I'm beyond grateful for everybody that wants to bring me on. I really don't take it for granted. But I've got a goal and an agenda, and I tell people everything works backwards from your goal. And my goal in 2018 is to really get the studio off the ground. Um, so, so much of my time and attention is on that. Um, so forgive me, uh, with all the kindness in my heart, I will, I will almost certainly have to decline. And just the raw, brutal reality is we're gonna look at the numbers. How many people do you reach um, to see if, by taking that time, if I can help um, the more people, the more likely I am to say yes. So. Uh, I know that's 
horrifying and I was mortified at the beginning of uh, impact theory when that's all that people were looking at. I get it, man. It sucks, uh, but everybody's got to balance their time according to their goals, so forgive me. But I am super stoked that you want me on. Thank you. I don't take it for granted. Um, what's up to everybody in the feed? Uh, Fast and the Curious is in Dubai. What is up, Dubai? Thank you guys so much for joining us. Amazing. Connor says, respect, much love, and maybe in the future, please remember this. I have a story that I think you would love. Keep killing it and bless. Dude, thank you, man. I really, really appreciate that response. Full respect. All right, Seam, what you got for us? Okay, let's take some questions then. Like you mentioned that you're basing your you know, behavior on your goals of what you want to accomplish. So how do you decide what's the most important thing for you to do, let's say, for within a year, within a week, or within a day? How do you narrow it down? Yeah, this I, I would love to be able to write a book on this because to figure that out, is to become a successful entrepreneur. Mm. And that really is the thing that people struggle with is, okay, they understand, all right, I'm supposed to start with a goal? Cool, got it, I've got my goal. Mm. Uh, and then I'm supposed to identify where I'm at currently? Cool, I know where I'm at, I know where I'm trying to go, and now I'm supposed to work out that in between, how do I break into step-by-step -step mm. chunks, uh, and I don't got that. Yeah. And I have no idea how I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> and that, of course, is incredibly difficult to teach people because it's so specific to what their industry is. So some broad things that I can tell people, and, and this first part is stolen directly from Tim Ferriss. So go get on that Tim Ferriss tip. He talks about the lead domino. Mm. Lead dominoes, is, it's asking the question, what one thing could I do or learn that would knock down a bunch of other things? And that's really important that you identify that thing that's gonna have the biggest knock on effect possible. Um, so to, to really step back and say, okay, I knew that, you know, 20 years ago, I wanted to be a filmmaker. Okay. Well, how do I become a filmmaker? I need to convince somebody to give me a lot of money. Okay. Well, if I can't convince people to give me the money, then I need to be able to create the money myself. Okay. So if I want to create the money, what do I need to do? I need to learn to be an entrepreneur. Okay. That's a really big thing, but how do you break that down into smaller chunks? Okay. Well, what are the fundamentals of entrepreneurship? Uh, momentum. That's one. Understanding goals, that's two. Team building, that's three. Understanding the basic building blocks of finance, that's four. What is it, what's the difference between revenue and profitability? How do you identify um, what makes for a good company, a crushing need on the part of the consumer? How do you solve a problem for them? Um, better to sell water to a man who's had. You break off. Uh oh. Huh. Uh oh. Good thing you noticed. All right, what's up, everybody? I'm not sure what happened. Um, we lost everybody. It died. But, but we're, we're back. back. Like Phoenix from the ashes. Yes, well <laughs> said. Indeed. What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry about that. Uh, we were in full steam, rocking and rolling. We lost everybody. Um, but yeah, so this is Seamland, by the way, for everybody just joining us from Estonia. If you guys remember back in, I think, October, we did a 24-hour live. As part of that, we had a contest for anybody that could find all of the Easter eggs that we had, and Seam is the one that did it. So we flew him out from Estonia. He is here, and um, he and I are answering questions. He came armed with a bunch of questions from himself and from other people that submitted from uh, the community. So without further ado, we will get back to the questions. That's amazing, yeah. So like, let's say, like, what would you do if you're, you notice that you're, what the things you're doing, they aren't leading you towards your goals. Like, if you feel stuck in a sense, you're drained, you have no clue of, you know, what do I do next? What do we do then? Like, So whenever I'm in a position where I'm feeling lost, I try to find people that are farther. It's actually raining. What is happening? Indeed. This is Southern California. <laughs> it never rains. The one time we do a live outside, it starts raining. That's hilarious. Um, so finding people, like think of it as a board of advisors. So literally this week, I'm flying to New York um, to meet with somebody, literally just to ask questions um, about building a comic studio, which is step one of our master plan to beat Disney at their own game, is starting in comic books. Why comic books? A, it's a traditional feeder into film and TV, but more importantly, you can have a high failure rate and survive financially. So it's very cheap to fail in a comic book. It's very expensive to fail in a TV show or movie. Mm. Um, so, okay, cool. So then if I'm not sure what to do, then I know the questions to ask, namely, why am I going to fail? So I'm flying to New York to ask somebody who's, who's had a very successful career in comics, 
basically one question from a thousand different angles. Why am I about to fail? And in that breakdown, they'll be able to help me avoid a lot of the traditional pitfalls. And then of course, the correlate to that question is, how do I try and guarantee my success? Right. And so I, I try to put people in, in positions when I'm asking them questions like that, where we ultimately end up playing the game, no bullshit, what would it take? So I don't need the answer that you think is plausible. I need the answer that you know will work. And so if you get people that are farther ahead on their journey and you get them to play that game, why am I about to fail and what would I have to do to guarantee my success? Um, and they may give you absurd answers, but the absurd answers will help you identify what the critical pieces in the puzzle are. So if they say, well, you would have to convince the most famous writers in comic books to stop writing for Marvel and come write for you. Okay, cool. I'm going to just assume for a second that I can do that. And I'm going to ask, well, how would I do that? Mm. And their answer may be, well, you would have to pay them three times or you'd have to give them more ownership or whatever. Or you'd have to pay them three times what Marvel's paying them and give them ownership. Okay, cool. Now, I may not be willing to do it, but at least I know what I would need to do in order to get there. So that then helps people go, okay, I know what guaranteed success looks like. And if I can do that, I will. But if I can't, like, what's another path? Or is there another? So like with Quest, I was trying to find a way to help my sister be happy. And she was morbidly obese and clinically depressed. Mm -hmm. So we could kidnap her only give her certain foods to eat to help her get lean. And that would work. Like if you, um, if somebody can only eat boiled chicken breast and steamed broccoli, they're going to get lean. They'll be fucking miserable, but they'll get lean. So we could do that, or we could make food that she chose based on taste and it happened to be good for her. Right. And so literally that conversation ended up being the foundation of quest. Let's make food that people can choose based on taste. And it happens to be good for them. What the fuck is going on? The brain is missing you up. Man. Yeah, something. We're back. What's up, everybody? Now I'm getting real skeptical about Instagram's technology here. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. But um, by way of goodbye, just wanted to thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I'm going to answer a couple more questions just in case we have people that are tuning in for the last time. Uh, but this is our third attempt at just going live and answering mm -hmm. questions. And by the way, what's up to everybody in the feed? Dan, Danny, my friend, what's up? Rogue101010. Sam Jacobs official, what is up? Francesca Fitness, welcome to the feed. It's Davik, what is up, everybody? Good to have you here. The cool develop, we know you, my man. Law of Ambition, what's up, dude? <laughs> Good to have you in the feed. Uh, Carmen Varner, hey, right back to you. Johnny Cordero, what's up? Thank you, Law of Ambition, for welcoming, welcoming us back. Much appreciated. Harding JX has a question. Um, how do you know if you don't know what you want to do? All right, this is one of the questions that I get most get asked most frequently. And this comes down to engaging with things that you find interesting at this point and seeing if they turn into a real fascination. So if you're in the period of your life where you're not sure what you want to do, the key is to go experience a whole lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff. Find something that piques your curiosity and then really dive into it. But you really have to experience a breadth of things to find out what it is that piques your curiosity. So if you're not sure, if nothing comes to mind, you just haven't experienced enough stuff. So go hard on that. Bori Bombero, Tom, you're awesome. Thank you, that is very like kind. That's the question, like, are there any journaling questions you'd recommend to others? I would say like one of the most interesting questions to ask yourself every day is like, what if, like people tend to associate what if with regret, you know, what if I fail or what if I don't make the improvements? But what if you ask yourself, what if I did do, do like this? What if I did take action? And what if I kind of, what if I expanded my mind beyond its current limitations? Like that's an empowering question rather than trying to focus on what the, what, what are the things that are holding me down? You're, you're trying to focus on the things that are, that would give you more power in a sense that would allow you to be more. So the, the questions are very important mm. of how you frame your questions in particular. So are there any questions you would like to ask yourself? I think that one is so powerful. That's sort of a mic drop on that one. Just reframing things in, in terms of not if I fail, but what if I succeed? Um, and honestly, at this point, I don't. that's not like how I approach journaling or thinkitation. I'm more specifically focused on relentlessly, and this, this is something that I think is really important a lot of people don't do, relentlessly asking whether what I'm doing is actually moving me towards my goal or not. Mm -hmm. I think that's huge. 
And by the way, we've had we've been having technical problems. Uh, IG keeps shutting down, so this will be our last one, even if we crash. So I'll say goodbye, answer a couple more questions, but if we get cut off, just uh, know that this goodbye will have to suffice. But yeah, so I'm I'm always asking, is what I'm doing actually moving me forward? And the ability to be relentlessly honest with yourself about that, right. I think, is is super critical, and most people can't be. Um, what is up? Social. Social sense, social sense media. What is up, Ryan Nelson in the house? Sylvia VC two. What is up? Backlash. Nice guy, Eddie. What's up? Unstoppable. Hi, Seaman Tom. What's up? What's up? All right, guys. We'll take one more question here, and then we're gonna bail. And this is from. Navid Molu, hey Tom, do you think fear of success is real? Man, I hear that so much that I'm gonna guess that it is. That really hasn't been something I've experienced. I will tell you one thing that I did experience early in my career, the fear of having a momentary success which took me to some height that I would then inevitably fall from. Mm. And that used to freak me out. And so the thought of like, whoa, what if I um, do well on this thing, but then fail on the next. Like, God, that would be scary. And could that in, in some way influence my desire to have the first success? Maybe. Um, but that, I wouldn't say, was ever something that I spent a whole lot of time thinking about. I was really pretty hardcore about, I had a goal, my goal was exciting, and I really wanted to achieve it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. This was amazing. Uh, been a lot of fun to be back on IG. I haven't done an IG live in a long time. So thank you guys for joining us. This was a lot of fun. And if you don't know this man, this is Seamland. He was the winner of the 24 hour live that we did. We had a contest during that back in October. He won. He's here from Estonia and is an amazing guy. He's got his own social feed. You guys should check him out. His name is spelled S. I-I-M-L-A-N-D, Seam Land. You can find him on YouTube. That's where he rocks it the hardest. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Till next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care. Bye. If you would like to support us, then leave us a review on iTunes, subscribe. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that I'll keep going, and you have to make sure that you're going to keep going as well because I'm just sharing my own journey, but you're the one who's still going to have to take action on the things that I'm sharing with you here. So make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well, like always. My name is Seem. Stay impactful. Stay empowered.